In this LED we will talk about predictive learning analytics. Although we mentioned that in week 4 only we will see predictive learning analytics, we realize that in week 4 there are too many activities and we will be talking about two different models. So, we thought of moving the last LED to about predictive learning analytics in week 3. What is predictive analytics? We briefly touched about this in a week 1. Predictive analytics that is to analyze the current and historical data to predict the future events. So, in this predictive analytics we will involve machine learning and uh, data mining tools in the learning analytics. Predictive analytics is very common, it is applied in different domains for example, finance, health sector, telecom and other, other domains. For example, the weather prediction is by done by predictive analytics. It collects a lot of historical data over the period of last year, last 10 years, then it predicts what will happen next, whether it will be sunny or rainy and next day. Also for fraud deduction uh, in uh, bank transactions can be done using predictive analytics. Another example is in a day to day life is having anti spammers in email. In an email, we collect historical data about what of the words the spam email contains, then we create a model, then we will predict whether the, the next email is spam or not. Although it is not predicting the, the future event, but it predicts the incoming email before the learner or the user detects it is a spam. Predictive learning analytics. So, what is predictive analytics for learning? In predictive learning analytics, it is to understand what might happen next in the student's interaction to the students, whether the student is able to answer the question correct, or uh, student needs more help in the next slide, or the student will need, uh, will pass the exam, or student needs hint in the next question, those things will be predicted. In order to do the predictive analytics or to predict the future event of the students or learners interaction, we need to record the historical behavior of the student. From the historical data, we can create a model then extrapolate that model to predict the future events. Predictive analytics involves descriptive and diagnostic analytics also. For example, first we need to describe the data, what are the data, then we need to identify the pattern that is the descriptive analytics or diagnostic analytics, then we need to extend or extrapolate that model to predict the future events. Let us see the activity. In this activity, we discussed that the predictive analytics needs uh, historical data to predict the future events. However, do we need historical data of a same learner or we can use data from other learner? For example, as I mentioned in weather prediction, we realized that in order to predict the temperature tomorrow or, tomorrow or in order to predict the climate tomorrow, we need to understand what was the climate in last one month or one year or last 10 years in different seasons, but it is about the same climate and same area, right. So, in learning analytics, in order to predict the future events, do we need a data from the same student or can we use the data from other learners? If you say we can use the data from other learners, what are the restrictions? What are the assumptions? Please think about this question, write down your answers. After writing down the answer, you can resume this video. You might have realized that we may not able to collect enough data of a student to in order to predict the future events, because a student will be uh, newly starting the learning environment. In order to give a recommendation or prediction based on that, you might need to wait for one week or one month. So, it is not possible, right? We need to give a personalization or adaptive feedback uh, hint messages immediately. Uh, after they join the learning environment program. In order to do that, we need to consider the data from other students or from the similar learning environment. So, if I say similar data, what are the similar data? What are the restrictions in order to collect the similar data? For example, it means domain. Is the student, the data we collected is in the same domain, is in a math or the same concept, we need to think about it. Also, is the same learning environment. We cannot apply the data collected from learning environment X on learning environment Y. So, we need to collect data from the same learning environment. Also, the interaction behavior should be similar. For example, in learning environment X, first version you might have uh, different menus or different interaction behavior allowed for students. In second environment, you might have uh, additional features that is not allowed. 
you need to collect data which has a similar domain, similar interaction behavior also in similar learning environment if you are talking about technology enhanced learning environment. For example, if it is a MOOC or a classroom environment, we need to provide a personalized learning content based on the similar user data taken this course in last semester. In a MOOC, the student will be taking the course for first time, but we have a same set of students or similar kind of students who have taken the course in MOOC. All the data we collected from the MOOC platform will be applied used to predict the future events of the current students. So, we can collect data from the students who have taken this course in the previous semester or previous year or previous events and create a model and use that to predict the future events of the current students. So, who are the stakeholders and why were we doing this predictive learning analytics? What is this, what is in for stakeholders for predictive learning analytics? For learner, it is very important because based on this predictive learning analytics model, we are going to provide the suggestions or feedback to improve the learning. So, it is very important for learner as a stakeholder. The second stakeholder we know is teacher. For teacher, it is very important to know what will happen to student next, whether the student will be able to solve that particular problem or will he pass the exam or the student will be able to uh, complete the given task. In order to help if they are not able to complete task, the teacher has to know when to intervene and what to intervene. So, the predictive analytics should give an insight saying that the particular student in your class might have a problem because his learning activities or interactions with the systems or environment is not enough. It says that the student might not be able to complete the problem given to them. For example, a teacher can know that in the class out of 10 students, 3 or 4 students may not submit assignment in next month. So, what can we do? So, teacher can think of other different strategies and make motivation to students and ask them to submit assignments on time or they can extend their assignment deadline. So, similar activities are helpful for teachers. So, predictive learning analytics is very important for teachers as a stakeholders to understand which student will complete the course also to understand what is the problem in the current learning content. We talked about other stakeholder that is institutes, academics, academic analytics uh, stakeholders or the institutes or district heads. They also will be interested in about predictive learning analytics for example, what will happen, which course will be taken by most students in next semester, which course will not be taken by most students in this college. So, they can decide whether to run the course next year or not. The other important stakeholder in uh, learning analytics is content developers of the e-learning systems. If the learning analytics or predictive analytics says that the students will have a problem if their interaction behavior is kind of certain pattern, then you might need to give this particular recommendations. These informations will help the students to create the automatic agents. In uh, e-learning systems, we can have agents which can interact with students based on the learner behavior. In order to design this agent, modeling the students behavior from the historical data is very important. 